What's up, what's up, real MVPs, Ricky Widmer here, and welcome in to another edition of MVP Sports Live. I'm going to hold the microphone like, uh, b- what, Bruce Buffer of the It's Time there you go. for MVP there you go. Sports Live. I'm joined, as I always am, with my beautiful co-host, Dave Oster. Hey, everybody. Dave, how you doing? How you doing this day? How you doing after the weekend? We had a big sports weekend. It was Super Wild Card Weekend, baby. So much bad football. <laughs> was so it all much. bad football? No, but the Bears game was, and that's that's the most impactful Dude, of my life. So I gotta watch the uh, the the Nickelodeon broadcast, baby. Let's I heard. go. Let's I go. Heard there was some entertainment over there, but yeah. yeah, it's not the end zone, Dave. It's the slime zone, is what it's called. You gotta get into the slime zone. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna be talking about Super Wild Card Weekend, um, and also we're gonna be talking about other football stuff and basketball news, because um, there was a bit of controversy tailing off of what we talked about Friday about uh, the NBA and COVID, and then it just got worse over the weekend uh, and controversies uh, galore. So Dave and I are going to look at that. Before we do, housekeeping really quick. Discord, if you're not in it, join it. Best community, link down below. Exclamation Discord gets it into Twitch. If you want to support us, patreon.com backslash MVP vids so you can go ahead and do that and get rewarded for doing so. Link down below or exclamation Patreon into Twitch chat. Um, I will throw this out there too, because I know that there's uh, some people that have been like, well, the thing about Patreon that scares me is it's every month. Two things. doesn't have to be every month. You can just become a patron for a month and immediately cancel it. There's one month. Uh, Number two, if you have Prime Gaming, throw us your Prime Gaming. You get the same rewards as a bronze patron that way, so you can go ahead and throw us your Amazon Prime Gaming. It's a bronze bronze patron. It's a Bron patron, a LeBron patron uh, is what it is, is if you subscribe. <laughs> uh, and then last but not least, we're on Twitch every Monday through Friday, twitch.tv backslash MVP vids. But we are also on YouTube at MVP Sports. Follow everything. You'll be able to be in tune with everything going on with MVP. Dave, let's start with the NBA. And uh, like I said, it's kind of a conversation stemming off of what we had on Friday of do they have to change the protocols? Dave, now after the Sixers have uh, played a game with seven or less people, the Celtics now have had two games canceled, one of which being the Bulls game tomorrow is canceled. The mm-hmm. Mavericks, oh, fuck, what was it? The Mavericks and the Pelicans, I think, today? Mavericks, Pelicans was tonight. Canceled. Was canceled. Um, well, postponed, postponed. Postponed. I, yeah. I, postponed. That, yet again, they kept the second half of the season open so that they could reschedule things. Mm-hmm. Um, also Miami heat have added seven players, including Jimmy Butler to the health and safety list. That usually means that they're on the tracing, uh, yep. for COVID. So that's not good. Dave, the big question that's been going on in the discord, it's been going on on Twitter. It's been going on wherever fans are talking about the NBA is because of what is going on now with the rampant cases and yet again if you're not in a bubble shit like this is going to happen yep does the nba need to pause the season and take a little bit of a step back and be like and i'm just going to keep talking because i think that uh, i think that drink went down the wrong pipe dave's coughing over there he's not and he's like please keep talking um do they need to pause the season uh because of all these cases because of all these tests and kind of think like okay let's take two weeks The thing I've heard is let's pause it. Let's take two weeks, kind of think about what we need to do to make sure that everyone is safe in our league and that we don't just keep barreling through this and have more positive tests. Well, that really sucked. (laughs) So what exactly happened? I leaned back when I took the sip and it went down the wrong pipe. You okay, big guy? Yep, I'm tearing up a little still. I'm going to get through it. I'm going to power through. (laughs) Power through. No Corona's here. <laughs> Just positive thoughts. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, like, the NBA should look at pausing the season. The mm-hmm. rates at this point and the fact that they aren't really sure of, like, hey, we're going to delay. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to cough again. Yeah, that, I think you're, what you're going to say is they're going to delay this game, like Boston and the Mavs game. But, you know, fuck the Sixers, right? The Sixers don't get Continually to get fuck the Sixers. That yeah. That is the plan. Uh Adam Silver, hatred for the Sixers, well known, very deep running. Um, can happen. So I think that they won't have enough of an agreement across all the owners, GMs. Mm-hmm. I can, what the fuck? Go ahead. 
Go ahead. I'll, I'll give my. I think pausing the season is just what you have to do. Like that's just what you have to do because the whole thing with me and this goes into what I said on Friday is when you're not in a bubble, players have freedom, and we even saw this in the. We've seen it in the NFL. We've seen it in the MLB. And now we're seeing it in the NBA where when you're outside of a bubble, players have the freedoms to basically live their normal lives. And I'm not saying they shouldn't be able to live their normal life, but if you're not locked down like you were in a bubble, obviously there's going to be greater chances for something like COVID to kind of sneak its way in. So, I mean, we've seen it NFL, like I said, we've seen it in MLB the NBA was not going to be the perfect case of like, oh, the NBA is the one that's not going to have these problems. However, will the NBA be the first one to do what the NFL didn't, to do what MLB didn't? Where MLB, it was like, all right, these teams cancel. We're not going to reschedule these games. Fuck it if it messes up playoff odds. Um, the NFL was just like, hey, let's fuck the Steelers, right? Like Pennsylvania, we just don't like that state. Uh, we're How clearly they were right to do so. I mean, the Steelers... Yeah. Just, just punked out of the fucking playoff. So. <laughs> uh, and now the NBA, like, will Adam Silver have the cojones to go, yeah, we're going to do what other leagues have not. We're going to pause the season and kind of rethink things. Yeah, I'm. what I was trying to get to before was yeah. I don't think that they will have the ownership GMs mm-hmm. to all agree on the fact of let's postpone the season because it punishes teams who are healthy. Mm-hmm. Because if you look at a team like the Nuggets, they've played teams who are missing their best players. Yeah. Like I think all their wins come when their opposing team is missing like a 20 point a game score or something crazy like that. So mm-hmm. yeah, it's beneficial to some and not so to others. Uh, one thing they also publicly argued about was the fact that they were not agreeing on the roster size. Mm-hmm. Uh, they wanted to, a lot of teams want to expand that roster size so they could continue to play games yeah. well down. And other teams are like, no, fuck it. If you can't keep your people healthy, we're not dealing with that. Like, it's very divisive uh, in the front offices. So mm-hmm. I personally think that it should be at the point where if we're going to be canceling X amount of games or postponing X mm-hmm. amount of games in a given set of days, like, then we have to look at a league-wide pause yeah. for a week like even just doing a week i think there needs to be some sort of a baseline set for either games postponed or mm-hmm. total players in contact tracing slash positive tested and then if we hit over like 20 mm-hmm. or 30 or whatever that number is that issues like a league-wide hold and you just have to wait it out until fucking shit gets under control again for like 10 days so I don't think that would be the worst thing if I mean, like, mm-hmm. think about it. There's four hundred and four fifty. We'll just round number four fifty yeah. players in the NBA. Mm-hmm. If we hit uh, forty five players, yeah, all throughout the league mm-hmm. who are in contact tracing, unable to plays or positive mm-hmm. testing, unable to play, then the league should go on a ten day pause. Like, is that a fair guideline to set going forward? I think that's I think enough? it should be it's like too high. I think that sounds fair, like at least a 10 day pause. And the the main reason why people are throwing out a two week pause is to give guys who have tested positive now time to get healthy because the COVID runs about two weeks. Um, But I think they just need to pause it to think, what do we want to do? Here's an idea I literally just had right now um, that the NBA could do. Pause the season right now. Take about a week or two to plan what I'm about to say and then put it into action of basically now the hardest part is finding what sites you want. You basically have four cities that are bubble cities and how you do it is you split the teams up into four groups and how you basically do it is all right for this amount of time, these three weeks or four weeks, you're going to play the teams within those bubbles. Then it's like, okay, half of this bubble and this bubble switch half of these switch to where it's like, you're kind of containing them in bubbles, but the only travel you're having is when, okay, you've played everyone in that. Now we have to remix the teams. And I think that could be done fairly easily. It's not going to be the easiest thing in the world, but I feel like even something like that may be better than what we're having, where it's like all these teams traveling from city to city, because I feel like, I I want to say, I feel like that is, 
that is like yeah, going into it. The problem is the players who go out. Yeah, the that's why they have a bubble. If they're not going out. That's the thing. Mm, yeah, but I don't think the I don't think the players want. The players don't want a bubble. <laughs> exactly. It takes away their freedom. There's like a hole in the back of my throat right now. No, I get it's you. I get away. you. I hate that feeling. Uh, but yeah, it's like they don't want a bubble. Guys like James right. Harden want to do whatever they want. Go to whatever strip club in Atlanta whenever they want to. I mean, just hang out with their family, and like yeah, if too. their family goes out, friends, who knows? Like that's mm-hmm. the problem. So the traveling across cities, I'm not really concerned with that. It's the purely like, no matter where they go, they still want to go out with their family. They want to yeah. go out with their friends. They want to enjoy life, mm-hmm. and it's incredibly selfish. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's the problem. It's just there's a split even in the NBA, just like there's a split in America about how to treat this situation and how to survive the pandemic best. I think a lot of players are very responsible and they understand, hey, I'm about the long game. I'm Mm -hmm. here to win a championship. I'm here to make money. And the best way I can do that is to keep myself in the best shape possible. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to take the precautions I need to. Other guys, less so. Is it kind of hypocritical that the NBA this year, and I know that this year right now is different to where we were when uh, the Thunder Jazz game got canceled because we were nowhere near a vaccine at that point and everything right. was very new. But I just thought in, in my head right now, is the NBA owners and Adam Silver a little hypocritical because back then it was, oh shit, we got one one positive test potentially. Let's cancel the se- Let's pause the season to where now it's like, ah, we got to test whatever. Like, whatever, yeah. keep it going. Like, shouldn't it be the same standard? No, we know a lot more now than mm-hmm. we did back then. I mean, that 10 months ago, different world at this point. Mm-hmm. So, I think... We're, we're, we're learning to live with the COVID. <laughs> it's a bad admission, but yes, yes, we are. Um, I, I think that the hypocritical part would be the fact that they don't take precautions when we hit a critical level. Mm-hmm. And it's just defining what that is yeah you know whether it is like i said 10 percent of the league being out due to contact tracing or and or positive tests mm-hmm. or you know three postponed games in a day for two consecutive days or for three consecutive days like something along those lines where you just have to hit some level of a trigger yeah um to understand hey this is not helping anyone by having these games continue to roll and by having our guys get sick because other teammates of theirs, other guys even in coaching, can't keep themselves, uh, mm-hmm. you know, safe at all times. And again, they've said they're going to look at the restrictions based off of warm ups and time without masks and all this stuff. Mm-hmm. I've even seen people be like, "How come they can't just play with masks?" I guess a couple college and high school teams have, and I mean baseball you know, players have too. But I know ba- baseball and basketball are different. Sport. Basketball has a lot more of a constant exertion where baseball yeah. is hit the ball run or in his fucking game of the world. I mean, it's just not constant exertion. So like, I guess that's a thing, but like, let's be honest there. We've known since the beginning, the nurses that have gone, Hey, here's my oxygen breathing without the mask, put the mask on. Hey, look, yep. dumbasses. It's the same thing. Yeah. Like, it so, doesn't I mean, hurt. like, is there something they could do even if it's not like the crazy like super thick mass like mm-hmm. there's there's definitely like uh even like the neck gator kind of guys yeah. like that um something mm-hmm. the question is like should they be wearing that during the game or mm-hmm. during warm-ups or something like limit the amount of contact between players because again remember on the field okay off the field everybody's gonna be wearing fucking masks yeah like why magically on the field is it safe? And this is the football conversation. This yeah. is just purely ripping yeah. straight from McAfee. But it's like if I you're mean, in that the, quarterback the SEC, room, this was their rules. You're in that you're in that locker room, mask better be fucking on. But you're on the grass, grass is okay. Mm-hmm. COVID doesn't touch the grass. <laughs> COVID can't live on the grass, man. Fucking what? That's look. It's just excuses. All mm-hmm. of this is just purely excuses because yeah. they don't want to lose money. That's yeah. that's the final line. We'll see where Adam Silver mm-hmm. lands on this. Because we praised him in the fall or in the spring last year for shutting down the league and mm-hmm. effectively getting America to admit that there was a larger problem and starting that chain reaction of shutdowns mm-hmm. that saved a lot of lives, I believe. Yeah. Now the question is, is will the dollar outweigh here when, like you said, we are so close to a vaccine being rolled out. Mm-hmm. Like we're at the stage in Illinois here where we're looking at, hey, medical personnel and over the age of, I think, 70 or something. Mm-hmm. Is going to be getting vaccinated by the end of February. If mm-hmm. I the last thing I heard was yeah. February end of February, 
and then they're going to be rolling out to general population after that. So like, why why not just wait until fucking like July mm-hmm. and then hey look we'll have players with vaccines and it won't be a problem like how many lives of long term impact are we risking here you know would that be the worst thing in the world to where like so for example um not even like July let's say it's like and yet again it depends on I guess it depends when a full vaccine is kind of uh rolled out because the one thing I have liked is Adam Silver basically was like the nba is not going to jump the line um, right we're not they're not going to jump to the beginning just so all their players can get vaccinated the world's worst yeah um i just i wonder if it's like yes it's less games but what if pausing the season until the vaccine is rolled out and then coming back for like okay the records that we had before stay the same but we're gonna play maybe a modified like second half or maybe it's the same length as the second half maybe it's a little less games like okay it might be 20 games or so here in the second yeah. half um and then that's how we do this season um to where it's like like i said kind of like a modified lockout year um where yeah. we had the lockout for the the one that started on christmas day because like you said when does it become the money is not important player safety yeah. is Kind of like I was hitting on Friday, yeah, um, especially with the new strains. That yeah, I think three strains yep, have been three. discovered in the last uh, month, basically, and they're all more contagious than the initial ones. So, and again, we still have no idea long term. Um, and I think I know one player in Europe died from complications post uh, COVID, like literally just on the bench, like heart issues, just gone. So, I, I don't know if there's been anybody in high school or college sports that we've heard from obviously um out of florida uh why can i not remember his name um basketball player who had the uh count johnson. johnson yeah like that was the most serious thing we saw it was on tv for everybody to see it but like mm-hmm. yeah uh, you just you don't know yet and the long-term effects we still don't know mm-hmm. so a lot of scary stuff and yet we want the monies that's yeah. where we're at which I will say that bringing up Keontae Johnson is uh, ironic to me because I was looking this weekend and I did just now. Um, he rejoined the team. Last yep. I heard was it was as an assistant coach. Yeah, he's um, uh, he's not going to be playing this year. Yeah, which pu- made me go like this because Tankathon <laughs> still has him as like the 18th pick in the draft. Yeah, where Tankathon's I'm like, like one guy in a basement. Yeah, I, no, I know that, but it's kind of like a – Huh? Like, shouldn't we be taking him off of draft lists until we actually know, like, what went on and everything? Um, but yeah, the NBA, yet again, this is developing like Friday. Uh, we'll have to wait and see what the NBA does. Dave, moving on into the football. A lot of wild card games this week. We're going to get uh, to that. What weekend was it, Ricky? Sue! Our super wild card weekend. I like how okay. I, I thought about this in the shower today. I was like, Whenever I say super, I kind of do the cookie crisp. Yeah, you do. Uh, which, hey, you got to when it's Super Wild Card Weekend. But, Dave, we got football news today. The Eagles backtrack, Dave. Earlier on, it was, we're not going to fire Doug Peterson. It was a good season. We're going to run it back next year. Um, they've now doubled down or double back, Dave, where uh, yeah. Doug Peterson, no longer the head coach of the Philadelphia football team, the Philadelphia Eagles. Um, a lot of people are wondering, what does this mean for Carson Wentz? Is he for sure gone? Is this going to b- mean they bring in a head coach that uh, actually wants to work with Doug Peter or wants to work with Carson Wentz? Doug Peterson, everyone's linking him right now to the Jets job because apparently him and Jets GM have a uh, strong relationship. Is that somebody you want to pair up with Sam Darnold? Dave, I will speak to, I'll ask you about the Eagles though. Sure. With this move, there. are you as puzzled as I with the uh, why not fire him right after the season if you're going to fire him? Or is this something to where it was like, no, we're going to keep him. And then later on, you're like, maybe the GM, Lowry, was like, mm, I think I'm going to lose my job. Better him than me. Uh, from the rumors that I had heard come out was the fact that the changes he was proposing to this team were not drastic enough. Mm-hmm. He was proposing shifts in coaching staff, you know, yeah. taking, you know, a defensive line coach and making him the defensive coordinator, uh, maybe taking, I don't know if it was a quarterback's coach or, mm-hmm. you know, a, one of the offensive assistants and basically promoting 
just promote from within. Yeah. And it felt like that wasn't enough to fix the problems uh, from the owner standpoint. So it was the like, wow, you're really just kind of like lazily going into this. And again, they mm-hmm. linked it back to the previous year where it was, you know, uh, him saying all his guys' jobs are safe and then having to turn around and the front office like, uh, no, they're fucking not. You're going to no, have to fire not. them. They yeah. are gone. So I think a lot of this just comes down to the fact that, and again, he even had comments that got leaked out of mm-hmm. frustration being told what to do. And he's like, not his own man. So if you read into all that kind of stuff, like there's clearly a uh, multiple voices in that front office that all have an idea of how things should be done. And if you don't agree with them, then you're not the right guy for the fit. And mm-hmm. Doug was not that guy. I don't know. If Doug's a bad coach. Um, I don't think you can call anyone who wins a Super Bowl a bad coach necessarily, but uh, I do think that he was the wrong fit going forward with this new regime uh i shouldn't say regime this new team Mm -hmm. that seems to be building around Jalen. yeah i mean and that's to me where like this is a team yet again i feel like the coach that they need to bring in Mm -hmm. is somebody that is going to work well with Jalen, and that needs to be an offensive mind and uh one of the top name i'm just going to go ahead and say it dave i think that they need to give a call to lincoln riley they need to oh, give him a call, so throw the fucking hurts. bank at him, and yeah. say, how would you like to work with Jalen Hurts again? You did great thing in Alabama with him. Or not Alabama, at Oklahoma with him. Uh, but uh, we would like he to throw him. the bu- – like, here's the Brinks truck. Yeah. Come be our head coach. Work with you your old quarterback. about Jalen after he got removed from his starting role in Alabama? Talk- yep. Consummate professional, great yep. guy, great character mm-hmm. guy. Never be a quarterback in the NFL. Like, mm-hmm. he's got Tim Tebow-like, you yeah. know – uh, upside issues mm-hmm. perceived he goes over there works with lincoln riley and out the gates just chucks that fucking ball down the field mm-hmm. like where the fuck did this guy come from kind of <laughs> moment so the fact that like you're instantly going let me relink him to the guy where he found his success he found mm-hmm. and he unlocked jalen hurts i love that idea i'm all in on that i don't know what um the situation is with Lincoln Riley and how much money he'll be looking mm-hmm. for. Obviously the urban Meyer rumors asking for five years, 12 mil a yeah. year uh, for Jacksonville. We'll have to see if that's going to be true. I heard, you know, there's mm-hmm. might be a press conference tomorrow uh, post the natty uh, that we're going to hear from urban Meyer on mm-hmm. maybe his future. So that might set a precedent, obviously urban Meyer, Lincoln Riley, not quite on the same tier of coaching, yeah. uh, but one's been in the game more recently than the other. So mm-hmm. I don't know. I just, To me, the only reason why it's like that would be the first coach I call only because like, do I think it's like comment section is going to say no fucking way that happened. Yeah, no way it fucking happens. That's what I'm saying, too. You should try. You got to try. The only reason I don't think it happens is if I'm Lincoln Riley, you're sitting there going, all right, I can go. I can go to the NFL. Let's say it's something he wants to do. I can go to the NFL. It's the next step in my career. Um, yep. But at the same time, I'd be looking at it going, if it doesn't work out, I'm fired. Then I need to find a new job. Here at Oklahoma, we didn't have a great season this year. They went 9-2, and two, his worst um, year. His, a great worst, twice. his worst, it ties as many losses. He's had two losses every year. 12-2, yep. and 12-2, 12-2, 9-2. Um but he's got job security. Like Oklahoma's yeah. not going to move on from him. So that's why I feel like Lincoln Riley, he ain't moving because he's like, I got a good thing going here. Like Oklahoma is going to fire me. Want a challenge. Yeah. Unlike anything he's seen before. I mean, I'm sorry, college sport mm-hmm. or college football. There are a couple names at the top of that. And everybody else is a fucking watcher. Mm-hmm. You're just, you're just there to watch the show yeah. because you're not Nick Saban and you're not Ohio state mm-hmm. and you're not Clemson. Sorry to the rest of y'all. You don't even stand a chance in the conversation Mm -hmm. like is what it is. You'll never recruit top talent like they can. You'll never be able to pull that. You can work some tricks. You can get the LSU luck involved sometimes. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously the Mad Hatter's gone, but they still have some fun to their fucking game. It's I don't want to say it's futile, but like I think if I was a college coach with his level of uh, uh, genius. Offensive, yeah, genius, offensive off, creativity. Yeah, like, uh, someone Kim, like Kingsbury. Yeah, someone who's got a gift clearly for seeing the game differently than people mm-hmm. and 
eventually the game will catch up. Yeah. But it's a matter of like, as long as you're this far ahead, you should do something like you should take the most out of the situation. So mm-hmm. I want to see someone like him take that leap to the NFL because college has become the like predecessor to the NFL as far as offense and defensive schemes. Mm-hmm. And I would love to see him get a three year head start yeah. on some of the stuff that he's thinking up that we won't see in the NFL for a couple of years. Yeah. And I mean, the big question too is like, there are coaches that I do agree with you. The NFL is like the show compared to college, but there are coaches that are like, if he would have won a national championship already, I think this question's a little different. Uh, there may be the thought in his mind of like, I want to win one here at Oklahoma. I want to be a college football championship head coach. Yeah. Yeah, uh, but yet again, you got to beat Nick Saban. You got to beat Dabo or Nick Saban to do that. Um, and that's pretty much, we'll see if o- OSU tonight can do that. They beat Dabo. Can they beat Nick Saban? Um, the other guy, and the only reason I bring him up is that when I was watching Baltimore, Tennessee, the announcers were ranting and raving how this guy has not gotten a head coaching job. And that's Greg Roman with the Baltimore Ravens. And the only reason I think about that is look at the quarterback, the type of quarterback that the Ravens have in Lamar Jackson. Is Jalen Hurts Lamar Jackson? No, but he's got some similar tendencies, I would say, where it's like he's a guy who can throw. He's A, could throw better than Lamar, uh, can throw the ball deeper than Lamar. Um, say Lamar accurate in the short game, but mm-hmm. Jalen will air it out yeah. better. So maybe like Greg Roman can do things deeper down the field, but the mobile quarterback is what I'm saying. The type of scheme he's been able to set up for Lamar, I think that would be if like Lincoln Riley's off the table, I'm bringing in then my second guy on the list is a Greg Roman because it's like, okay, he's catered a scheme around Lamar. We have a quarterback that is similar to Lamar with the way he can be mobile. Uh, the only difference is he's not like Lamar in the fact of, they said in the game yesterday, when he makes a juke move, he doesn't fucking slow down. He stays at top speed, and boom, he's in the end zone like that. I don't think uh, Jalen Hurts can match no. uh, the mobility yeah, like, of Lamar Jackson. He might Jackson. be a little more sturdy. Yeah, a little, a little, a little built physically stronger. Mm-hmm. And it's like that's I just look at it and I go, that's another coach I would bring in. I mean, Byron Leftwich is another one I look at. Like these are guys I'm thinking. Okay, who's going to work with this quarterback from? Tampa Bay right now, right? Yeah. I, well, here's the thing. I like most of the rub from Tampa Bay. I put on Tom Brady because when Tom Brady comes to your team, he's in control. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like he 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 is getting credit for what Tom Brady is doing yeah. to some extent. Yeah. You have to wonder how much of this is Byron Leftwich, though. Mm-hmm. I like, what his contribution to the story. I'd love to hear more from him in press mm-hmm. conferences, post games. I haven't really paid attention to uh him at all i'll be honest Mm -hmm. i know he's there i know he's part of the offense but i the main the main reason i bring him up is because i liked what he did in Jameis's last season as the uh as the coach like i I can't remember if he was oc yet at that point or if he was the quarterback coach but i mean qb coach he played a big role in like kind of tweaking winston's game where yeah he still threw a ton of interceptions winston will do that because he's garbage uh, but like the Maybe. scheme that they were doing at quarterback, I'm like, he's an offensive mind that I feel like deserves an interview. I don't know if he gets a head coaching job right away. Um, yeah. but if quarterback's not your main thought, like the question I'll ask you, we haven't really thrown him out yet is should Jim Caldwell have a job after it was fired by the lions? Some people say, uh, not rightfully so unrightfully no. so. Um, he's one I look at. It's like, if you don't care about the fit to quarterback coach and you just want a guy for culture and culture alone, yet again, is this, he is this Houston though. Um, Jim Caldwell might be a guy you look at this article. I'm looking at too. Yeah. The last name on it. I kind of like, I look and I laugh because, uh, any, any chance they give, uh, USC offensive coordinator, Graham Harold, a shot, Dave jumping from college OC to uh to nfl head coach that would be a monumental leap Mm -hmm. uh i don't think well graham harrell again incredibly successful college quarterback Mm -hmm. once nfl obviously a backup level quarterback but those are usually the guys who are the smartest guys in the room by the end of the day 
Yeah. Like those are the kind of guys, you know, the, the Steve Kerr of the NBA, basically mm-hmm. the guy who's not necessarily the superstar, but he has to know the ins and outs of everything in order to function at a high level next to the stars. Yeah. And I think that's great. Graham Harrell has experience. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I like the idea. It's very similar to um, what's his name down in uh, Dallas. Oh, uh, uh, Callan Moore. Callan Moore. Yep. Yeah. Same thing. Incredibly sex- successful college quarterback mm-hmm. comes to the NFL, learns it on the bench, learns the clipboard, mm-hmm. smart kid. I don't know if Graham's ready for a head coaching job in the NFL. I don't know if that'll be, you know, quite yet. I think yeah. he's he's promising, but maybe, maybe maybe not throw him into that fucking lion's den. Yeah, I, I don't think so either. Last thing I'll ask you is on Doug Peterson. Sure. Should he be the head coach of the New York Jets? If he wants to be, I don't, I don't, I look, again, I look at it, I look at I more of should the Jets bring him in. It. The Jets should talk to him. Mm-hmm. You can't be worse than Gase, but obviously the way <laughs> things ended a in, a de- in a defeatist culture of <sighs> we're going to intentionally lose this last game. And the mm-hmm. entire team is pissed at you about that, but you're doing what's best for business. Uh, as far as the draft is concerned, like that's a fucked up situation Yeah, because obviously he, in his mind, I wonder, was that call from him or was that call from upstairs? Yeah. And we'll never know that until like 20 years from now. But I would love to understand that call and that decision being made to like, we're giving up and we're pulling Jalen Hurts out of this game because he might win us this game. Mm-hmm. Like I, it, it, It's one thing I wish I had clarity on because if it was his call, I would say no. Fuck you if I'm the Jets. I don't want that loser culture in my fucking house. I want my team to be happy. And we're looking at the Eagles team and going, well, this guy wants out. This guy wants out. This guy wants out. Like, Jets already got that fucking problem. We need mm-hmm. someone to change the culture. We need to bring in some positivity, you know? Like, I look at it, and I just want to double check if Frank Reich was all the way through those years. So, 2017, when they went to the Super Bowl and won, that was Frank Reich. Then you had uh, Mike Gore. Let's see. Um, Mike Gore, and I think, uh, this year was, oh, they don't have, uh, the OC listed. Um, but basically what I'm getting to is I know more about Eagle offensive coordinators than I do about Doug Peterson. That's my problem. Um, if I'm the Jets, because and the only reason I asked this is that's the job he's linked to right away. Um, yep. I interview him, but I ain't giving him the job. My guy that I want is still Brian Dabble. Uh, from the bills like that is my he is my that's the one i go with i know this past weekend wasn't the exact game i thought the buffalo bills would have they got the win they fucked me because they didn't cover they let the (laughs) colts cover um but they still won the game that colts defense is really tough um he's the guy i look at that's the one i want working with sam darnold because i don't know if drew i don't know if doug peterson can be the one to develop sam darnold the year he's already, three into his, his career. Yeah, I say yeah. three three years into his career at this point. So like, and if you're the Jets, you got to be looking. Out of all out of all five quarterbacks that were drafted in that draft, Josh Rosen's pretty much done. Not done. not his fault, but he's pretty much done. Didn't uh, help his own case. The other three all won playoff games this weekend. Baker, Lamar, Josh Allen are all winning quarterbacks in the playoffs. Uh, they are now into the divisional round. You're the only one sitting at home. So I feel yep. like you got to double down, get someone um, that is going to help Sam Darnold and help you win football games. However, Dave, we're going to move on to a team that needs to replace a quarterback. Um, oh. This is uh, some patron listener mail. Um, got the question basically. Here, let me pull it up exactly so I can read it word for word. It says, should the Bears move on from Mitch if they don't have a clear upgrade at the quarterback position currently? So basically how I'm reading into this is if you don't have a clear upgrade, either drafting or free agency, should Mitch be the quarterback next season? This is a guy, however, Dave, let's say he's the envy, not the MVP, the NVP of that game because, you know, Nickelodeon fans know how to pick a winning quarterback, Dave. He's the oh, one yeah. they all like. What do you think? Yeah. Uh, I mean, he's close to snage to all of them, probably. <laughs> that's, um, that's what Tim said. Looks like he's a fucking... Never mind. Um, <laughs> we need to move on from Mitch Trubisky. 100% mm-hmm. the Bears need to move on from Mitch. I don't care who you have to pull in. I don't care what the price is. 
you have to move on from Mitch Trubisky. Whether we do target Deshaun Watson in a deal, which seems unlikely now that Deshaun has been linked to uh, forcing his way over to perhaps Miami. We'll see how that one unfolds. I'm sure mm-hmm. we'll talk about that another day. Yeah. Um, but there are other quarterbacks out there. I would love to have some talks with guys like Jimmy G. I'd love to talk to the Jets and see what the situation with Sam Darnold is going into mm-hmm. the draft. Are they 100% locked into Sam Darnold by the time the draft happens? Or could their new coach be interested in moving and uh, shaking things up and taking a young guy, uh, maybe maybe Zach Wilson, maybe a field, if he balls out again, you know? Mm-hmm. Who knows? So, like, I think that you have to expend all resources. Ryan Pace damned us mm-hmm. with his ignorance, with his confidence, with his bravado of being like, I saw one quarterback, one quarterback only. Watch Mitch out there for you know all eight of his fucking college games. I knew that was our guy. Mm-hmm. Didn't look at anybody else. That's the point where you a you should have never said that out loud because you yeah. just you just prove that you're a terrible fucking talent evaluator uh, at the top end of the draft. Credit to him for late round picks. He is excellent on late round picks, but that's great. We need to hit on top round picks. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, when I look at this team, you have to have someone who fits. And I'm going to hate saying this, Matt Nagy, because I heard there are no talks of removing Matt Nagy from the head coaching position at this time. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> like, so I'm going to float that out there. So if you want to get fancy with your styles, just picture he has to be able to run Matt Nagy's offense. Yeah. So, I mean, the thing that that makes me think of, and I'm going to, uh, I'm going to pull up a post that I saw on Facebook. And um, this post comes from, He was the Dave. This post comes from the man who was the Dean when I was in high school. So he's my Dean when I was in high school, Um, huge bears fan. This is what he says. Nine, nine points, six, six with no time on the clock. 11, 11 first downs, five after the two minute warning in the fourth quarter. One, one for 10 on third down conversions and the one coming after the two-minute warning in the fourth quarter, this is undoubtedly the most deceiving 12-point final score differential in the history of final score differentials. Like, I don't know how you could have watched that game on Sunday and thought to yourself, everything's fine, run it back. Run it back, everything's fine. Like, I, this offense couldn't do anything the whole game, Dave. They couldn't do anything. Like, I watched. And that's why... I know we've talked about replacing Mitch before quarterback needs to change. I don't even think Nick Foles is the answer. Um, No, he's not. To me, I'm doing one of two things I'm doing. I'm either getting like, and here's the question with the whole rookie quarterback thing. Yeah. I feel like the only option the bears have of getting a quarterback in the draft is if they like Kyle Trask or Mac Jones trading up to like 32 uh, and getting them there. That's, that's option A. Um, option B with the rookie is actually taking your 20th overall pick. Some mm-hmm. of your later picks and maybe next year's pick. I know people are like, why don't trade draft picks? Remember when we traded for Cleo Mack and didn't have one and then missed out on Josh Jacobs. Um, Honestly, we didn't need Josh Jacobs. He wouldn't have fixed our team. Yeah, I'm just saying like that's who was true. That's the only hit that the Raiders had uh, with their picks that year. Um, I still take that trade 10 times out of 10. Yeah, because Cleo Mack is Cleo Mack. Um, yeah, playing. But the other thing is you take your 20th, a future first, and some other picks. You try to move up to get a quarterback if you like Trey Lance or Justin Fields or Z- – like I, I say Fields or Lance. I, it, ideally, it's Lance because that's, really? that's the one that's probably going to fall into that range. I feel like the top three are all going to go in the top ten, and I don't know what the Bears would you have think? to give up to uh, get into the top ten. And you think Wilson – Will be what do you say? Wilson will, off the board and Wilson then will be two, no matter what. Someone's going to trade up for him, and I think Atlanta goes with Fields at four. So those guys are going to be. And if Atlanta doesn't go with him at four, I yeah. feel like then either the Lions, Panthers, basically seven through ten. Lions, Panthers, Broncos, Cowboys. Think about it seriously. Um, or if there's a team like the Niners that want to move up from 12, or if the Patriots finally move up for a quarterback, which I don't see happening. Um, I just like to me, I don't know, man, that's tough to me. The question is if you're a bears fan, 
What do you want for next year if you don't go with a rook this year? If you don't go with any of the rookie quarterbacks, do you want to run it back with a Nick Foles and just fuck it? Like, if we do bad, we do bad. We get a top pick. We run for one of the quarterbacks next year. I got one that might be even better than that. And yet again, only because of turnovers. Um at least he throws the fucking ball down the field. That's I, I for once in my life, I'm going to watch an offense. I know. I know this is basically the same thing as Jay Collar, but let me have my moment. Go ahead. I want a guy who can throw the ball down the field and not give a shit one way or the other. He's like, look, I'm going to just keep doing it. It's my receiver's job Fitz to come magic? down with that ball. Fitz magic. Fitz magic might be cheaper. <laughs> it's we have Nick Foles. Fitz magic is the same goddamn yeah. man. I know. Like Plus uh, Fitz magic is maybe better plus with year, winston like, i feel like i think with winston you have to trade with uh the oh no he is up so i mean yet again does he want to stay in new orleans that's a big question because it seems like the saints are pretty pretty much locked in with having Taysom and Jameis as their quarterbacks next year um I, I don't know if he wants to be the backup and fight for that starting role because it does seem like Taysom has been given the role can fucking, regardless. He can fucking win it over Taysom. Taysom's a glorified running back. Let's Taysom's be been getting all – Taysom won the games, Ricky. True Taysom point. got True all the point. starts. I'm just Taysom not a huge fan of Taysom. literally all of the starts. I'm just not a huge fan of him. To me – You don't have to be. Sean Payton loves the guy. Yeah, good point. To me, the, the one that's most intriguing is, yet again, if you're trying to lose I'll take games, a swing of Josh Rosen. <laughs> if we're trying to lose games, fuck it. James Winston, Josh Rosen. Good right point. there. There's my, there's my backfield. Fuck it. Um, yeah, if you're trying to lose games, it doesn't matter who your quarterback is. Um, what about it, Heineke? It, dude, That man can swing it. Is he under contract with the fucking I don't know what he's... Here? Let's I, see. I know Taylor. he was an XFL guy. Dude, but, the XFL, uh, let's go. That guy, I mean, he made us look bad. I, I'm watching that game, and I'm like, how the fuck is this guy off the street throwing fucking dimes, yeah. and our guy can't throw the ball more than four yards down the field? Like, what, is, what am I watching right now? Dave, he's a free agent, baby. About to be our QB1. I think he's About a free to be agent. QB1 so of the future uh, for the Bears. Give that man a contract. Yeah, he's a free agent. 2021 UFA. Um. The other thought I had is, and this is if the Bears want to win games but don't want to go with a rookie. Um, if Philip Rivers wants to play, no. No, 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 wants to play, no. but doesn't want to go back to the Colts, or the Colts want to go with like a Carson Wentz, should the Bears look at a Philip Rivers if if no. they want to still win games or try to win games? No, why is it because it stop. is it because he can't throw the ball down the field, or you think is that the fear he can't? Uh, extend the field and it's more shorter medium passes. I just I, I hate no upside. Yeah. I I understand he's 40 and all that stuff. I'm he's a had man. A I'm 40. I got no kids. Great career. He's an all timer. He he was one of the first guys to have dumb passing numbers before mm-hmm. anybody else did. But I just do not want to watch him play with this Bears team next yeah. year because I think that because we're losing Allen Robinson, because we're losing a couple of the talented pieces on this team who we're probably not going to pay to keep. Mm-hmm. we're effectively taking ourselves out of playoff contention yeah. by not re-signing guys. Our defense is good enough to win a championship. Mm-hmm. And, and that's where it's at. But we're stuck in a situation where we didn't have it on the offensive side. And I think by grasping at straws and trying to take a swing at someone mm-hmm. like a Philip Rivers, delusional fans yeah. and media and whatever, well, I'll be like, oh, you know what that means? He got the Colts to the playoffs, and they've got a great defense and, and, and an up-and-coming offense. We're the same thing as the Colts. We should be an 11-win team next year. Mm-hmm. I will just bounce my head off the table until I pass out, Ricky. I can't <laughs> have that conversation. Can't do it, won't do it. And that's the thing. Like, I don't know <laughs> the I just I don't know the right answer for this Bears team because draft quarterback. Every, every time well, here's the thing. If you draft a quarterback. You have to. It's basically the whole thing of how, let's say you guys get a Trask. Let's just say that's the thing. Low expectation, uh, kind of not a Fields or a Wilson. He just falls to us. Maybe if he, he falls to you. Guy, or fifth guy, maybe. How successful do you expect him to be win-loss-wise? Win loss and would that be better than Trubisky this year? Because yeah. every year you're not competing in the playoffs, you are wasting another year of this defense, which is a Super Bowl caliber defense, I would say. Like this is a yeah. defense that has the talent to give you a shot in playoff games. Like for the longest time in that game, I was like, 
man, it's still 10 to fucking three. Like my first thought was, all right, maybe the Bears cover. Then I'm like, thought two, if the Bears offense can get cooking, maybe they win this game. Like, and then obviously the fucking Saints pulled away. Um, yep. But it was one of those things where it's like, this defense is good. What is going to give you, I feel like the Bears have to be thinking, what is going to get us almost instant success on offense? Is that keeping Nagy? Is that keeping pace? Is that running back with Trubisky? Is it a veteran like Phillip Rivers or Jameis Winston? Or is it going with a rookie? Um, And yet again, any of those could be the answer. It's just which dice do you want to try to roll in order to make sure you're not wasting another year of this defense? Draft quarterback. Draft Trask, I will take. Draft Trey Lance, Mm -hmm. I will take. I I think Trask can win right now. I think Trask can come into the NFL and win games. I don't like Trey Lance as much to do that. I obviously he's not played football for a fucking year, basically. Mm -hmm. Uh, So there's a lot to go there. He's someone who is coming out of a smaller school. So offensive system wise, reading defenses, he's probably got a lot more to grow. Uh, I like Trask. I think that he's big, strong, right to hit the ground running. uh, Someone who can contribute day Mm -hmm. one to a team and help them. Maybe. And he J- can't be worse than Mitch Trubisky. Yeah. He can't be worse than Mitch Trubisky. I can't keep dude, doing this. Dude, put some respect on the NV- MVP, Dave, the Nickelodeon no. valuable player. Do uh, it. JD says he's got Lance falling to the Bears in his 2.0. Um, could happen. The only linchpin in uh, Lance falling that far, there's three teams. 12, the 49ers. But I see them going with a Stafford or a Matt Ryan. Um, the Patriots at 15. And then Washington the at 19. The, I'm sorry. He is the opposite of everything that uh, Belichick. they would pick. Yeah. yeah. Look, the, at, look the at, one at the success they didn't have this year with Cam Newton. Yeah. The one Someone I'm afraid of is the system. is the Washington football team. Because I, mean, I, yeah. I honestly feel like Washington trades up to get Lance or they'll draft him at 19. Because he's the – out of all the teams that I look for with him, I'm like, he would be a good fit with Washington. However, are they just going to re-sign Heineke? But at the same time, they got Alex Smith. So like they he's got to figure out what he's doing. Yeah. I mean, he's under contract for two years. Like Yeah, but like he's got to figure out what he's doing. Like he's <laughs> the injuries again. It's just I feel bad for the guy. JD, Dave's finally on the Trask train. The TT. If you give me the options of a guy who hasn't played football in a year <laughs> or the guy who's coming off of a year that made <sighs> Joe Burrows look like a scrub, I'm gonna take that guy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's move on though, Dave. Let's go into uh, the dampest of dudes, the soggiest of shooters, the moistest of men, and sometimes the mistiest of misses. These are our wet boys, players of the day. I don't know what note you tried to hit there, the but weekend. it didn't hit. Oh, dude, you didn't like the moistest of men. <laughs> I not, tried not some, quite. Hey, tried something new. Trying to pull a little flavor. Trying to you trying to uh, uh, what what am Hello. I thinking of? Uh, Guy Fieri trying to flavor town it. Trying to give it a little flavor. Fieri. Uh, Fieri. That's it. Uh, Guy Fieri. Well, they, I mean, that's how it looks like when you read yeah. it, but it's it's pronounced Fieri. Okay. Uh, he yelled it. Uh, the only reason I know is yeah. he yelled it. Somebody, uh, I, I, the YouTube clip came up. We have been saying it wrong for X amount of years, oh, dude. I, I absolutely have it. I absolutely have it. Guy Fieri sounds so much better, though. Right? Uh, Apparently. You know, sorry, right. Guy. But trying to take it to Flavor Town, Dave. But these are our players of the weekend. Uh, usually how it goes is Dave gives one, I give one. Patron, Silver, and Above at MV at patreon.com backslash mvp vids also get to vote on one dave we got three wet boys today all from the nba let's start with you take it away my man i'm just gonna say i appreciate the fans uh and you for sticking with the nba uh superior sport even on our super wild card weekend oh, uh man. the effort was there the effort was there <laughs> uh so i went i went with one of probably one of the guys you wouldn't normally hear his name come up someone who low-key you know he's mm-hmm. been working his way he's been putting in the grind uh incredible athlete in the draft literally we we described him as an athlete he's not a basketball player he was an <laughs> athlete in the draft guy could not play basketball he could do two things fun to he watch him re- in summer league against the Sixers. incredibly fun to watch <laughs> but all he could do was dunk and rebound yes. couldn't do a damn other thing yes. now hamadou diallo is coming off of a two-game streak this weekend where he looked incredible in both games he was not only ball handling, he was bringing the ball up the court. He was making decisions. Uh, he was attacking the basket. He was doing pull-up jumpers, putting on some moves. And again, even if, if there's a wide open three, he can take it. 
He's not a three-point shooter, but if it's wide open and he's got time, he will knock it down. So shout out to Hamadou Diallo. Shout out to the tanking Oklahoma City Thunder, who won back-to-back games. Uh, Shaquille Alexander, I think, is putting up like 27, 7, and 7 or something, like <laughs> near LeBron numbers, you know, as well. But we talk about Shay all the time. I want to give yeah. the love to Hamadou. He had two fantastic games, and I hope this is a sign of things to come. Dave, I'm going to say this, and uh, I had a decision to make in my wet boy. Ooh. Um, which way did it go, Ricky? He, everyone knows which way it went, Dave. I know. Um, That's why I wanted I'm gonna so start, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start out by saying this. Yeah. I'm not mad at you for your wet boy. I'm not mad at the patrons for their wet boy. Um, but LaMelo Ball got fucking snubbed. LaMelo Ball deserved a wet boy. If I could give two wet boys, being the youngest player with his triple-double, the kind of player he is going to be in this career. He also joins his brother now, who uh, Lonzo was the one to dethrone King James. Uh, now LaMelo dethroned, I think it was. It Mark wasn't Luca. Yeah, it was Fultz. Um, yeah, Mark Because the list was LeBron, Ball, Luca, and then Fultz. Yep. Yeah. Now, or, uh, now we have Ball yeah, at I, the top of the chain. Which, again, rookie of the year. LaMelo Ball put yeah. some respect on it. Yeah, he we called it before the season started. I mean, did you see the bonehead play that uh, the bust of the year uh, made? Oh. We're uh, down I three. Know. I'm just going to not Man. pass up a two. <laughs> I'm going to pass three. up a two. two. And Ricky Rubio's like, dude, fucking take the shot. You take the easy shot, we foul, and then we go ahead and it, we try to do it again. It didn't matter. It didn't matter. Dave's like, they're going to lose anyways. I go. I think we went O from uh, the field the next night. Yeah. By the way, yeah. he's basically losing my fantasy fucking league. Bust, by the way. Bust. Say it with me. I mean, he, mm, I can't even say that. Yeah. No. I w- I would, he is not having a great season. I would say something stupid like he'll never get a wet boy all year, but then the patrons will do it just I will give him wet boy instantly at that <laughs> point. Uh, the next time he puts up anything. But my wet boy... Living cuisine, like this guy in two games. It. I can't even argue. Like this is dude. normally when I attack you and Sean. Yeah. In the spirit of Sean, I would attack you. Even. Yeah, dude. Like but, no. averaging forty-two in his game. Went ten of fifteen from three yesterday, Dave. Like this man was on a fucking mission. Uh, the only thing Levine couldn't do this weekend was the one thing that we praise him for in taking a final shot. Uh, yeah. Misses the game. Like, misses the game winner against the Lakers. Air ball and Tim said it when we were watching it. He goes, Zach's kind of hanging his head and ducking. He he wants that one back, uh, the three against the uh, against the Clippers. But like, dude went fucking supernova this weekend. There was no way he was not gonna get my wet boy. I was not gonna pass up on Levine Cuisine like I passed up on Kobe White uh, last week. And uh, Zach Levine having a game. Bulls doing exactly what I want to see. Close games, but we lose. Dave, keep that high draft pick. Uh, for the Bulls, and Dave, the patron wet boy, NBA, another rookie, had to start in the only game that played with uh, seven or less players, Tyrese Maxey. Yeah. Kentucky What a fantastic performance. Apparently, Doc decided that no one else was allowed to shoot the ball. (laughs) This was, uh, get the ball to, oh God, what was that? What's that line? Get the ball to someone, like. What, is that from Friday Night Lights? No, no, it was like some shitty fucking cartoon, I think. But anyway, uh, point up. is, yeah, Max, we played 44 minutes of this game. Uh, just incredible amounts of energy required because Adam Silver absolutely hates the 76ers uh, and punishes them for it actively. Tucker, so, get the ball to Tucker. Ball to Tucker. Hey, hey Arnold. <laughs> hey, Arnold. That's all that was. That's all this game was, was get the ball to Tucker. Uh, 33 shots. Uh, the next closest person on the team, I think, had like 12 uh, if I remember that game mm-hmm. right, like there's literally a 20 shot difference. Uh, yeah. It was just Maxie's game to ball out. And I loved it. Um, you know, I, I think that everybody is enjoying the fact that he's having a ball out performance. I think he's having a good start to the year. Is he going to be, you know, a 20 point score game this season? No, but he's a nice complimentary piece. And I think that long term, you know, great addition to the core. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Dave, let's end the show talking about super wild card weekend we had six games on the docket today uh or this past weekend um i'll be honest some games shocked me some games did not let's start with the first one we'll go right through order colts at the bills this was one for a hot second i was like do the colts have it in them to dethrone my champion from the afc 
not Super Bowl champion, my AFC champion that I picked a week ago last Monday. Yeah. No, they didn't. Turns out they didn't. <laughs> nope, didn't. Not at all. Tur- turns out the answer is no. Uh, <laughs> great performance by the Bills. Uh, man, they their offense can just click. Mm-hmm. Like that's the scary thing. It's just you see it happen in front of you, and it's just like, oh, a completion. Hey, they strung together a couple good plays there. No, they're just moving the ball down the field like it's effort. It's it's fucking effortless to them yeah. at times. So, I mean, their offense is impressive. Their defense gets sto- timely stops, um, and that's all you need, really. That's mm-hmm. the recipe for success out there. So. I was really impressed by them. I think the Colts, again, love to mention the fact that they have a solid team moving forward. I just, you need a quarterback who's not named Phillip Rivers. Yeah. Sorry. I mean, yet again, he they have. He didn't kill you like they normally does in the playoffs, mm-hmm. but, you know. I mean, yeah, 300 yards, two tutties, no INTs. That's a, that's um, a magic number. No <laughs> INTs. Threw for, I didn't think I'd see the day. Threw for 40, 46 attempts in the game, though. Yeah. Um, where like Josh Allen was, he was everything for the bills, two touchdowns in the air had not only led the team in, uh, rushing yards, had a rushing touchdown. I want to say that was right before, uh, the halftime buzzer, but like Dave, this was a game where, uh, we questioned Diggs. He had a game, um, Josh Allen slung it and also ran it. Well, um, this bills team though, it's going to be fun to watch, uh, it's going to be fun to watch them against Baltimore next week. I can't Hell wait yeah. to see Allen versus Lamar Jackson. Um, I think the Bills – oh, fuck. I'm not even going to say Bill that. I was going to say, I think the Bills have a little bit of an easier time. But yet again, Baltimore's defense – Those are defense, Baltimore's uh, de- They're favored, but it's – I was going to say, oh, Baltimore's defense isn't as tough as the Colts. That's a lie. Um, yeah. Baltimore's defense is j- just as tough um, yeah. as the Colts team. Um, tough loss for the Colts, though. They've been a team I've been rooting for all year. Couldn't yep. root for you in this one because, you know, I've got to back my boys. No one circles the wagons like the Buffalo Bills. Dave, the next game had a unique storyline to it. Uh, all these games had storylines, I swear. Yeah, but this one was weird. Like, so Wofford, or I'm sorry, Watford enters the game. He's the starting quarterback. Injures his neck, yep. it seems to be. He's, he's sent to the hospital through an ambulance right away. Jared Goff comes in with the broken thumb. Russ can't get cooking. The Seahawks lose to the Rams? Yep. Does this Rams team have staying power to make a run? I hope not. <laughs> because we got I, they got Aaron Rodgers next week. Yeah, I, say, I, I do not believe so, but, mm-hmm. I mean, look, Goff can't complete passes. Uh, yeah. That's he, he He's wildly inaccurate with that mm-hmm. fucked up thumb, so... They beat a team that was defense honest, sucks. Defense sucks uh, in Seattle. The Seattle Seahawks are literally, you know, Pittsburgh West. They, yeah. they had they had an incredibly hot start. Russell Wilson was the MVP of the league after week four, week five, mm-hmm. and they just tailed off quietly. And they didn't get the you know same media attention like yeah. Pittsburgh got at the end of the year because they weren't undefeated. But like, yeah. This is a tale of two seasons. Russ got mm-hmm. cool. Russ got cold in the middle of the season. It took him a while to get back up. Obviously, there were injuries. There was COVID yeah. cases. They didn't have a running back on their fucking roster for a couple weeks. Mm-hmm. But I mean, you you nailed it out. The defense just sucks. Cam Akers so, gouged them. Fucking yeah. gouged them, Dave. Like 131 yards and only one touch. Only one touchdown. Probably should have had more for Cam Akers. Yep. I it was it, it was a bad game, and I think. What this showed me is like, yes, Russ is a good quarterback, but like mm-hmm. he, I don't want to say he's regressed. It just feels like he's not the guy who you can, you know, he's not Aaron Rodgers. I'm going to yeah. put it that way. And he's I not going to have a team on the same level. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I mean, for the Rams, too, the big questions this week for them will be, and like I have an article here that just the headline is they're optimistic about them, but Cooper Cup with an injury in this game, Aaron Donald, which. To me, an injury that kind of scared me because it was they were describing it as like uh, he was having trouble breathing. So I was like, "Shit, does he have a? Uh, could he possibly have a punctured lung like Drew Brees had?" Um, though they think they're optimistic on those two that they'll come back and play against the Packers. But yeah, the Rams they are uh, first off was gonna, just disgusting. Now, that, that's all. Defense it is. wins it's games in the playoffs. That's what it is. Defense and run game. Mm-hmm. Keep it simple. Keep the ball out of your opponent's hands. And Dave. Yeah. You mentioned him earlier. Bucks, Washington. Ty- Taylor Heineke almost won this one for the uh, old football team. Like, what would it have been like if the football team knocked off Tom Brady? 
What a legacy killer. What a legacy starter. The ravine just boo. <laughs> Max Kellerman would have been so lit. Oh, um, no, I mean, like, Washington, we knew they were a good team. Mm-hmm. We talked about how good they were as far as, like, this isn't... Even the, even Fox mentioned, you know, this is not a whatever the record is team. They're five and yeah. one. Or, and it, I didn't even realize... Well, we had recorded our stuff before Alex Smith was out, so yeah. whatever. Yeah. But um, it was just that defense did not stand a fucking chance against mm-hmm. Tom Brady. Tom Brady, uh, I, he just knows when to turn it on. Like, he yeah. is the GOAT for a reason. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was able to move the ball to just about every fucking target out there. We saw a good day out of Garrett Blunt. Mm-hmm. And that's, honestly, that that was the most impressive thing because that's their run game's he may look like LeGarrette Blount, Dave, but oh it's not LeGarrette God. Blount. <laughs> Leonard Fournette, you met. Thank you. Thank you. I love it, though, because I looked, I was like, oh, he did it, it again. I'm it. like, he did like, it again. <laughs> my brain's not ticking. He my runs like LeGarrette Blount. <laughs> he does. He does. He's a physical motherfucker. I love the um, pen yeah. throw, too. <laughs> I had to throw the pen. It was just that. I deserve that. I deserve, and there's a pen mark on my wall. They didn't pick it out. I'll remember that. I will remember that. Uh, but he did have 93 yards and a tutty. Yeah, he had a good game. And that's that's what you want to see out of this team mm-hmm. is the ability to control the ball, control the tempo. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Tom Brady's just – Tom fucking Brady in the playoffs. He's a different level. Yeah, and the thing I will say about this Washington football team, they just need a quarterback. Like, yet again, not – Ripping on uh, Heineke, but let's be honest, oh. he ain't the quarterback of the future. Oh, with no prep time. That was pretty That's fucking thing. impressive. Yeah. Like, no prep time basically being... Because I was thinking about it during the game of put yourself into those shoes of, like, you're just thrown into the into the line center. I'm like, all right, kid, you're up. And it's like, shit, I got to go up against like Tom it. Brady in a playoff game in Washington at home. Um, yeah. He did a great job, but, like, I was just thinking, I'm like, man... I can't wait for Washington to get a quarterback in this draft. Oh, this defense, absolutely. although Tom did turn it on, this defense is going to be oh, good. They, they got a they good got thing cooking with Ron Rivera. I agree. Uh, I I mean, this is – Ron Rivera is going to get a fucking medal. Yeah. His story this – the last 12 months mm-hmm. is incredible. What he's done uh, both as a human being, as a coach, yeah. as someone who sets the culture, sets the tone. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's turned around the franchise and yeah. – yeah, I think that's – it's an incredible year for him. Then the Sunday g- game, Dave, uh, or the Sunday games. Uh, yep. The first one, Ravens win 20-13 to 13 over the Titans. I just have one question for this game. Like, I know sure. everyone wants to talk about, oh, Lamar Jackson, Lamar Jackson finally won a playoff game. Uh, yeah. To me, that's great, but – what the fuck were the Titans doing, Dave? Like this Struggling. was a game Struggling where real hard. early, but it was like early on they found instant success in the passing game. AJ Brown was cooking with Tannehill, scored a touchdown. They get a field goal on the next drive. I'm feeling confident. I'm like, cool, plus three. I may be cooking in this one. And then it was they were just like, hey, let's force the ball. I know he only had 18 carries, but it felt like they were like, let's just force the ball to Derrick Henry and let's go away from what we were doing earlier in the game to where it was almost like a, even the announcers were like, yeah, they were having success with AJ Brown early. Why aren't they going back to that? It just yeah, seemed like what's going on. Like why? Yeah. There was a tone change, a tempo change. Mm-hmm. I'm not quite sure why the play calling went away from the, uh, the passing game. It made, mm-hmm. I, I'm with you. It made no sense to me because it felt like all the momentum just dropped, you know, the air just kind of deflated out of the place. So, yep. I was surprised to see it because I think that's a team like you can't take your foot off the gas against the Ravens. Mm -hmm. They're too good of a team to do that too. And as soon as they lost it, like trying to restart. Oof. Oof. Yeah. So no, I mean, it was just, it felt like even when the Ravens were down, I felt good about them coming back and winning Mm -hmm. this game. Like I just, you trust in JK Dobbins, uh, shout out JK Dobbins again. Um, but Lamar Jackson just, he works. He just worked. That's Dave's running back. His fantasy running back. Uh, I win shit, but I knew that he was going to be good this year. Also, the storyline of uh, the storybook ending to the logo madness of uh, Peter's getting the pick and then immediately going to the logo. Yeah, (laughs) He knew exactly where he was taking that shit, which is hilarious. People people who hold grudges, and I know because I'm one of them, we never fucking forget, Dave. We may want to forget, 
but we can never fucking forget. Can't do it. Can't do it. Won't do it. Uh, then, Dave, I know we talked about the Bears a little bit. Uh, they were on uh, Nickelodeon. I don't want to talk about it again, really. Uh, <laughs> no, no, no. I was going to say, we'll focus football. on the Saints. Saints, very good team at football. Uh, Michael yeah. Thomas, welcome back to the NFL. The question that I had for this one was, yeah. num- number one, did you watch any of the Nickelodeon broadcast? Uh, did no. You check the it out. What was the stuff that they highlighted on McAfee Show because they had on yeah. the kids. Yeah, uh, who yeah. Lex. Show. Lex, uh, fuck, what was his last name? Um, oh. Lex was the sideline reporter yeah. um, for the game. Yeah kid who seemed way too good at talking to be a 14 year old kid dude i know right like k- kudos, kudos to lex i also learned that noah eagle um who is ian eagle's son oh. sounds very much like ian eagle when he calls plays to where it's and like am i listening to ian or am i listening to noah um, nate it. burleson's a he's a g we'll fucking love nate burleson um and i think we just need to dub the slime zone dave the slime zone instead of the end zone they had slime on the uh on the I first down markers. Yeah. Um, is, it a bro- is it a broadcast I would love to watch every week? No. Um, the one thing I did find annoying as a football fan, because I know football, is every time there was a flag, Dave, they <laughs> out of the scoreboard, they had young Sheldon pop up and explain to you what a holding call is. Explain to you what a pass interference call is, and then make some uh, snarky comment about... Uh, Again, you are not the target audience. For kids, it'd probably be good, but for me, I was like, this is just dumb. Yes, was it was it silly? Yes, but it was dumb. Exactly. Um, so this is the let's get kids hooked on the NFL early on. Yeah. Don't worry about concussions, kids. <laughs> Learn the game. Slime zone, guys. We got the, slime. The slime zone. Uh, Saints in this one. I just want to ask you this. Yeah. I know we'll make our picks on Friday, but your Monday thoughts. Yep. Are you confident that the Saints can beat the Bucks three times in a season? Because of what they say, it's hard to beat a team three times in an NFL season. It's a damn good question. Because they, did, uh, they didn't look great uh, against the Bears. They played good yeah. enough to win. They played good enough to win. And again, how much more, how much strength does Drew Brees got in that noodle of an arm? Mm-hmm. It's the battle of the noodle arm quarterbacks. Yeah. I trust Tom Brady's receivers and tight end more. I trust the defense for Tampa more. Mm -hmm. I don't think, I think it'll be a very close game. I don't think this is a blowout. I think it could turn into a shootout. Yeah. I think it could be a fun situation where we see like a 27, 30, 35 game or a Mm -hmm. 30 game. Some, some, some decently high scoring. Yeah. Yeah. And then Dave, the last game of the night, what a way to end super wildcard weekend. I give you my fucking early prediction. What do you think? I fucking love this from beginning to end. Browns with the win, uh, 48-37. Dave, there's one thought I had through the whole whole game. Yeah. What did I say on Friday? What did I say? The Steelers were what, Dave? They were a bad football team. Why? The rule of Baker. The rule of Baker. You lose to Baker rule Mayfield, Baker. you're a bad football team. I'm The whole yeah. time, like, the Steelers yeah. are bad. Steelers are bad. You you look like I know everyone was saying, oh yeah, but they rested their starters. They're not a bad football team. The rule of Baker states you lose to Baker I, Mayfield, you're a bad team. I swear to God, the rule of Baker. Like, you know what's crazy? We have, we've created a movement, Dave, in the watch along that uh, I'm announcing right now. I don't know when it's gonna happen. We're making a rule of Baker shirt. Like, we are going to make it and sell it uh, because the rule of Baker needs to be kind of put on the pedestal after a win like this. Because uh, uh, it came from the mind of Dave, and it's true 100%. Yeah. Uh, it was an incredible game. Uh, Baker Mayfield literally kicked the fucking yeah. doors in. Yeah. Like, to start the game, yeah. just imagine that, like, I'm just imagine Ben Roethlisberger is going to open the door for you, mm-hmm. and instead Baker Mayfield just, pa right yeah. in. Just fucking cracks him in the head because that's yeah. it was over. It, it was so over. And the fact that the Browns defense let them come back in, and again, mm-hmm. Big Ben, Four touchdowns, four interceptions. Yeah. He gave it and take it away. Also, you know? a uh, what what is a uh, Big Ben and Peyton Manning have in common, Dave? Uh, they lost the game in the first play. They basically whoop. Oh no, the ball's oh, over my head. Dave Touchdown defense. In the first play. <laughs> yeah, that was oh, when he knew, he knew it was over. But no, I mean it was just that game. People who don't believe Baker Mayfield's for real, mm-hmm. look at this here and tell me he he's not for real because he's had multiple games where he's just been. Excellent. Nothing yeah. but excellent on the offensive side. And that's post OBJ getting yeah. his ass off the field. Turns out that offense, very creative. 
always looks for new fucking angles, mm -hmm. always gets different guys involved. I didn't think Nick Chubb was going to be a great pass catcher. Dude. Somehow, he got used more than fucking Hunt. Hunt and got like, used in the rushing game. He yeah, got the rushing touchdowns. And Nick Chubb is catching the ball. <laughs> what are we doing? We're fucking with everybody. That's why you Jake. can't fucking take things for granted against this Browns team. Mm -hmm. They are creative. I'm going to be rooting for them so hard against the Chiefs this weekend. I am too. Like, I'm not picking them, but I'm going to root for them. I'm not going to pick them either. But like, could you imagine if they go all the way to the Super Bowl? What would what happen if the Browns went to the Super Bowl? What a story. Yeah. I mean, then we'd, we'd have to shut down the league, Dave. They are lighting shit on fire already to celebrate one playoff victory because that's the first yeah. time in our lifetime, I'm pretty sure, they've probably won a game. Yeah. So fucking awesome for them. Uh, I, I can't be happier. But on the other side of that football. <sighs> Do you agree Big with ben? Eric? Does Pittsburgh need a quarterback? Is Big Ben done? Big Ben, $42 million next year? I think so. Let me look $42 it up. million. He's he getting dropped. Not a fucking chance that man is on this team i can't imagine i cannot imagine this pittsburgh team brings him back mm -hmm. again again it's it's nothing against him it's just you can't pay a 40 year old big ben 42 million dollars like i know yeah. he's what 39 38 whatever he is it doesn't matter he's old he's slow he's, he's hurt going constantly. to be 39 he will um, be 39 they have a potential out he is uh, so the cap hit is forty one point two, yeah, for him that's next awful. year. That's awful. God, how how his salary is broken up though? Four million in base salary, twelve and a half in signing bonus, fifteen million in a uh, roster, and then yeah. nine point seven reconstruction. Um, yeah. So, so like dead they, cap, they can finagle themselves out of that situation. But yeah, I mean, if they cut him, not. if they cut him after this year, it's just twenty two point two dead cap. Is what they're dealing with. Same if they would have kept him. Um, I think I think Ben's done. I think they are going to get a quarterback. I think they have to get Mason, a quarterback. Mason Rudolph's not the guy. No. no. Okay, just ask him. You just watched that him. Mason Rudolph like literally two weeks I mean, ago. Rule of Baker, he's bad. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> he was the one that played in that game. He's bad. Is, is that is that breaking news, JD? Well, that he's bad or uh, no, Bill O'Brien to Bama? Oh, uh, I mean. I'm not familiar I'm gonna with I'm going to say uh, there was Bill O'Brien. There was Bush. stories that he was going to be an offensive either consultant or OC for Alabama and join their staff. Kind of what uh Sarke not Sarke yeah, Sarkeesian, not Sarkeesian. Yeah, Sarkeesian did where I believe he was with the Falcons yep. and got canned what? and then went to uh Alabama to work Turned with them. Turned out a little bit harder to uh replace somebody. Never yeah. Mind. yeah. Yeah, yep. but uh, uh great games. Great games going on this weekend. I can't wait for them. They're a week away, though. Um, Dude, it's going to be crazy. The end of this football season has been mm -hmm. nuts, and I love it. And again, they like the Pittsburgh shit show of 11-0, and 0, mm -hmm. absolutely the worst team in the league for a couple weeks, yeah. Juju dancing everywhere, Juju getting danced back at. <laughs> I mean, like, he has been interesting. But, Dave, if they wouldn't have had a bye week, if they would have had an actual if bye week, they would have had a better week, year. Everything would have been different. We all get that. Um, but, yeah, no, I, I do wonder, like, who's going to be back on that team? Because their defense mm -hmm. is phenomenal. Yeah. Their team. Like, I talk about the Bears' defense. That yeah. Steelers' defense, right there with them. Yeah. Right I mean, there at the top of the game. So, mm -hmm. I, I – mm. Defense led by T.J. Watt. On that side of the ball. God. I mean, they worry. Oh, fuck. Who was the yeah, guy Bud they were Dupree. missing? Bud Dupree. That was it. They're also missing. Uh, there's a third guy. They got, they, they're a very talented fucking defense. They're yeah. very talented. They were missing guys, but still. Yeah. Like, um, I, was asked you know, today by, I was asked today by Brandon of uh, any chance Tomlin loses the job. And I was like, no. Tomlin does. It, they're not, it ain't they're Tomlin's not fault. Yeah. That's, well, that's not how they roll. It's not his fault. It's basically he's got Big Ben and a bunch of wide receivers. Like, Juju's the problem. Juju and the yeah. offense are the problem. Like Jake said yesterday. Uh, yeah, that Juju. game was soft. Yeah. Like, Ricky, you want to spell it out for him? S A W F T. Soft. There Thank we go. You, uh, but like I said. You got to draft your quarterback <laughs> and a running back this year. Yeah. Dude. Yeah. Ju Najee Harris would be uh, – he's not going to go there. He'll probably go beforehand. Uh, but he would be perfect for this for this team as a running back. Um, just He kind of fits Steeler football where it's just punch you in the mouth um, kind of running back. But yet again, it's like – I'm like, James Conner's been good, right? But yet again, 
if you want that. If you don't think he's good enough, you got to got to go ahead and get your guy. But Dave, that's going to do it for us today. Great show. Great Monday show. We'll be back tomorrow with more. Uh, championship game has already started, probably starting very shortly. Go ahead and watch that. It's going to be a great game. We'll be in the watch along. So if you have a prime gaming you want to throw, um, support us on Patreon, patreon.com backslash MVP vids. Uh, bronze level to get in on the watch along. Uh, watch the game with us. We'll be having people um, in there tonight. Join the Discord. Link down below. Twitch.tv backslash MVP vids, MVP sports on YouTube. Dave and I will see you tomorrow for another jam-packed show. And as always, have a good day, everybody.